Since this test is only on the back, thoracic, abdominal, and shoulder, we will not be covering the entire humerus. We will only cover the portion of the humerus that is relevant uh, to your test, and that of course goes all the way down to about here. The lower portion we'll talk about later. So we'll start up at the top. Here we have the head of the humerus, which will fit inside the glenoid cap. Around the head, around this way, here, if I were to actually take my fingers and kind of cup around the head like that, this area going around like this would be what is called the anatomical neck. And it's the anatomical neck of the humerus. If I were to then take my fingers and go around like this, this area going around like this would be considered the surgical neck of the humerus. Now, after the anatomical neck, you will see that there are two processes here and here. These two processes, these rounded processes on a bone, are tubercles. You have a greater tubercle and a lesser tubercle. In between the two tubercles, you'll see that there is a depression. This depression is called the intertubercular groove because it is in between two tubercles, thus intertubercular, and it is a groove. If you follow the intertubercular groove downward, you will see that you then come across a large roughened area on the bone. This large roughened area on the bone is where the deltoid muscle will attach, and thus this large area is called the deltoid tuberosity. So that's what that is. If we follow the deltoid tuberosity over, you can actually see that there's a little bit of a depression coming across like this. That is called the radial groove. Where's that again? Coming across like right there. Okay. Okay. All good? Mm -hmm. All right. The lower portion we'll talk about when we get to um, the upper extremity.